the political left reliably frustrates me. I find idiotic behaviour from the left infinitely more frustrating than idiocy from the right. I expect stupidity from the political right. I am always disappointed when I see it from the political left. And I am disappointed frequently. Left-leaning people engage in repeated displays of stupidity. The same idiocies recur again and again. They infect leftist politics and rot it to the core. But what are these idiocies that I speak of? Many of them revolve around a fixation with identity, a tendency to overfixate on people's identities, a tendency to obsess over the very immutable characteristics the importance of which we should be undermining, things such as race and sexuality. There exists a tendency to worship many of the oppressive social constructs that we are supposed to be eradicating. There exists a tendency to treat these social constructs as more than just locations of oppression and injustice. There exists a tendency to treat these social constructs as far more important than they really are. A tendency to treat them as defining and all-important. It can be seen in the people who view one's identity as the primary factor that defines the validity of one's views on related issues. It can be seen in the people who express a tendency to devolve into the very mindless tribalism that we are supposed to be fighting against. The gross tendency to pretend that struggles against oppression are not struggles in pursuit of that which is morally good, but instead struggles between groups. Feminism is about a struggle between men and women. Racial equality is about a struggle between black people and white people. LGBT rights is a struggle between LGBT people and non-LGBT people. A tendency to believe these kinds of things is disturbingly widespread. Views such as these represent the very illogical essentialism and mindless tribalism that we should be seeking to crush. And yet everywhere that I look, I see left-leaning people falling for these stupid views. The struggle for racial equality is not a struggle between black people and white people. The struggle for racial equality is a struggle between the people who support racial equality and the people who oppose racial equality. The struggle for LGBT rights is not a struggle between LGBT people and non-LGBT people. The struggle for LGBT rights is a struggle between those who support LGBT rights and those who oppose LGBT rights. These are the realities. I hate the tendency for mindless identity politics. I hate the tendency to engage in tribalism and essentialism. These things are not leftist. These things are the cornerstone of far-right politics. These things are the cornerstone of so much of the injustice that the political left seeks to eradicate. And yet tribalism and essentialism are everywhere. In reaction to the evils of oppression, people engage in the ways of thinking that give rise to and uphold such oppression. The essentialism is hideous. An opinion validated because of the identity of the person who espoused it. People characterised as good or bad based on immutable traits. Perhaps the worst excess of this is the gatekeeping of advocacy. You cannot be a feminist because you are a man. You cannot play an important role in pushing racial equality because you are white. You cannot be a leading advocate of LGBT rights unless you are LGBT. I hate these sentiments deeply. You belong to a group with disproportionate power. You should not be pushing aggressively for positive progress. The idiocy is stunning. Such movements must embrace the support of those who belong to privileged groups. By definition, privileged groups wield disproportionate power. Their support is worth a great deal. Yet some are more interested in essentialism and tribalism than actually achieving anything. It is embarrassing. Let's take the point of male feminists. 
many supposed feminists will criticise and reject the notion of male feminists. The idiocy is awe-inspiring. You reject the support of people who hold enormously disproportionate power. To reject the support of such people is to sabotage your own cause. The public support of male feminists normalises male support for feminism. This has the potential to win the support of large numbers of people who wield enormously disproportionate influence. As feminism itself has correctly identified. Furthermore, many people will not take women seriously. It is important to have male advocates because male advocates can reach people who female advocates cannot reach. And feminists know this. Male advocates can change the views of misogynists. By definition, male advocates can do this far better than female advocates can. Male advocates can win the support of other men. Men who female advocates could often not hope to reach. Male advocates can secure support from people who female advocates could never secure support from. Because, as feminism correctly observes, that many people are sexist. Many people do not take women seriously. And so in order to gain their support, and the disproportionate power that comes with it, you need advocates who they do take seriously. Some would insist that this feeds into those very ideas by catering to them. This is a falsity. Male advocates of feminism will attempt to liberate people from idiotic tendencies, such as the tendency to not take women seriously. By definition, only a man can liberate another man from this tendency, because it is defined by a refusal to take women seriously. Some would insist that winning over sexists and misogynists is an unnecessary waste of time. If you think that decreasing the opposition to your movement is a waste of time, then you are a moron. If you think that increasing support for your movement is a waste of time, then you are an absolute idiot. And that is what such advocacy seeks to do. And this does not just apply to feminism either. The exact same thing is true of LGBT rights and racial equality. Non-LGBT advocates and white advocates can secure support from people who LGBT advocates and black advocates could never hope to win over. The members of dominant power groups often have a better shot at securing the support of other members of their group. They can secure the support of those who possess disproportionate power. Just by existing, dominant group advocates serve to normalise support from the dominant group, encouraging those who wield disproportionate power to support the righteous movement. Nothing annoys me more than the tendency to dismiss and reject support from certain people due to their immutable and innate characteristics. Such a thing embodies tribalism and essentialism. These are the very right-wing tendencies that we should be seeking to destroy. Tribalism and essentialism are not the solution to these injustices. They are the source of these injustices. The support of those who wield disproportionate power should be embraced and encouraged. To do otherwise is to decrease the likelihood of your movement succeeding. To do otherwise is to prioritise mindless essentialism and tribalism over righteous victory. And worst of all, some even seek to portray this as virtue. Some suggest that it is more empowering if we just let the minorities fight their own struggle. This is apathy disguised as virtue. It is disgraceful. Should we have waited for the slaves to free themselves for the sake of empowerment? Should we have let the death camp inmates free themselves for the sake of empowerment? These idiotic claims about empowerment serve only to justify apathy amongst those who hold power. These idiotic claims about empowerment justify apathy on the part of the most powerful and in doing so perpetuate oppression. We should push righteous causes, not cower behind empty rhetoric. Rhetoric that pretends to stand up for the vulnerable when it merely condemns them to another few centuries in chains. If I see a man struck by a car, should I leave him to call his own ambulance for the sake of his empowerment? If I see a man being brutally beaten and bloodied, 
should I refrain from assisting him for the sake of his own empowerment? Empowerment is worth nothing when it is merely an excuse for leaving you at the bottom of the heap. Some attempt to portray leaving minorities to fight for their own rights as a source of empowerment. This is merely apathy disguised as virtue, and it will prolong the existence of injustice. This notion serves only to perpetuate injustice by rejecting support from those who are most capable of addressing it. I despise it when I see supposedly progressive people dabbling in grotesque displays of essentialism and tribalism, making claims that are inarguably and undeniably racist, sexist, bigoted, judging people based on immutable traits, liking or disliking people over things that they cannot control, rejecting support based on innate characteristics. I see these things far more frequently than I would like to. There is nothing progressive or left-wing about essentialism and tribalism. These things are fundamentally far-right. They are a road towards oppression and injustice. They should not be normalised and encouraged. They should be crushed. Those who normalise and encourage tribalist and essentialist ways of thinking are participating in the maintenance of the very forces that facilitate the injustice they despise. These fools normalise and encourage the very tendencies for tribalism and essentialism that have caused and upheld much of the injustice that they rightly oppose. Tribalism and essentialism are the enemy. We should not normalise and encourage tribalist and essentialist ways of thinking about the social world. Such things are a road towards grotesque hierarchies and immense injustice. It does not matter if your bigotry is reversed. You are still normalising and encouraging the same way of thinking. The very same mindless tribalism and illogical essentialism that has done so much harm. You may engage in one specific variety of such things, but you normalise and encourage them broadly. To engage in tribalism and essentialism is to normalise and encourage tribalism and essentialism. That means normalising and encouraging tribalism in all of its many forms. This idiocy needs to stop. We must not let the political left be devoured in a sea of tribalism and essentialism. Make no mistake, the problems that I am decrying here are not characteristic of the entire political left. I like to think that the majority of left-leaning people do not engage in such things. But these things are far more widespread than they should be, and they need to be called out. I criticise such things not to attack the political left. No. There is nothing left-wing about essentialism and tribalism of the kind frequently associated with identity politics. These things are right-wing tendencies. I criticise the political left not because there are issues with the political left. I criticise the political left in order to expose and eradicate emerging right-wing tendencies. I would prefer that the political left was not consumed by the very right-wing tendencies of tribalism and essentialism that we should be seeking to destroy.